word Allah is the unique name of God. He is the one and only, the absolute and eternal God. He is the creator of the heavens and earth, the creator of the universe. He is the Lord of all lords, King of all kings. He is the most compassionate, the most merciful. Allah neither begets nor is he begotten, and he knows no equal. God offers a description of himself in his book, the Holy Quran, stating, Say, he is Allah, who is one, Allah, the eternal refuge. He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to him any equivalent. The word Allah translates to God. Allah is not a foreign God and does not bear a foreign name. Allah rather is the semantic term for God. Regardless of this fact, some people harbor the mistaken belief that Muslims worship a different God than Christians and the Jews. And that Allah is simply the God of the Arabs. This is far from the truth. The word Allah is simply the Arabic name that connotes the Almighty God. Arabic-speaking Jews and Christians use the same word to refer to God. If one were to pursue an Arabic translation of the Bible, one would see the word Allah be used in place of the term God. However, Muslims, and Christians, and Jews all have different concepts of God. Muslims and Jews both reject the Christian beliefs of the Trinity as well as the Divine Incarnation. This, however, does not mean that each of these three religions worship a different God. There is only one true God. Muslims prefer to use the name Allah as opposed to the English word God because the Arabic word God can be made plural and can be rendered masculine or feminine, whereas the Arabic word Allah cannot be made plural and is genderless. For instance, if you add the letter S to the word God, it becomes gods, which is the plural of God. In the case of the Arabic word Allah, one cannot make the word plural by adding S or in any other way, morphing the word's structure. Likewise, if one adds ESS to the end of the word God, it becomes goddess, which connotates a female god. God is not female nor male. He is genderless. The word Allah in the Arabic language, in turn, does not have a gender. It cannot be made feminine. Additionally, Muslims reject the use of the word God because it has different connotations to different people. God means different things to different people because of the term God indicates entity worthy of worship. And regretfully, people assign God-like status to countless other beings, divine or otherwise. However, sometimes while speaking to non-Muslims, one may use the word God instead of Allah to help the intended audience understand the context of the word, to relate the message that you are indeed referring to the one supreme being. The word Allah comes from the origin word of ilah, which enjoins the two terms the and God, as in the God. The term ilah, which is the closest synonym to God in the Arabic language, is very rich and has several meanings. Ilah refers to an entity that is worthy of worship and service, an object of devotion and love, someone you turn to in desperate times, someone you adore and think about all the time. Ilah also is one that you turn to for protection, help, or aid. You find sanctuary and rest in ilah who is always present to comfort and guide beings of his creation. The relationship with God is expressed in the Arabic word Arab, which is used frequently in the Quran. Linguistically, it is defined by sticking close to something. It also means joining something with another. In the Quran, the word Arab implies that the owner, God, has full authority over his property, his servants and is a master who completely sustains his creation by regulating affairs, providing provisions, and granting all varieties of favors and blessings. al rabb means the one who sustains the hearts and souls of his creation. Muslims believe in one unique, incomparable God who has no son, no daughter, no father, no mother, no family, and no partner. He is the knower of the unseen and the source of all mercy. He is the creator, the maker, the fashioner, the wise. All that is in the heavens and earth magnify him. Muslims believe that none should be worshipped but him alone. He is the true God, and every other deity is false. 
No one has the right to be invoked, supplicated, prayed to, or shown any act of worship but Allah alone. God is unique, indivisible, and is similar to nothing. Whenever you try to compare God to anything in this world, it cannot be God, because God, to put it simply, is incomparable. God as a concept cannot be fully comprehended and grasped by our finite human minds. For this very reason, Muslims avoid picturing his image because imagining or visualizing him would be limiting him. The human imagination is limited as it is based on what it observes and experiences directly. The human imagination could not fully grasp the state of God who is timeless and eternal with no beginning or end. God has a unique nature and is free from gender and human weaknesses and is beyond anything which human beings can imagine. God states, There is no God but He, the Creator of all things. Then worship and He has power to dispose of all affairs. No vision can grasp Him, but His vision is over all vision. He is sublime, well aware. God is King, the Holy, the one free from all defects the protector, the keeper, the sustainer of earth and the universe, and all it contains. He is the glorious, the great, the deserver of all praise. The kingdom of the heavens and earth belong to him. Nothing is hidden from him, and nothing is beyond his capabilities. He is the Lord and the master of the physical universe, and the ruler and lawgiver for humankind. Allah is the creator of everything, from atoms to galaxies, from worms to the largest of animals from the smallest of plants to the biggest of mountains. He is the director of all that is created, the one who sent the messengers to rational beings to guide them and explain the religious laws to them with clear proofs and undeniable arguments. It is he who heats and brightens the earth, varies the direction of the winds, makes a man's heart beat, provides air for man to breathe, and keeps planets in their separate orbits. He is the one that merges the night into the day and merges the day into the night. He is the master of the day of judgment. Allah does not sleep nor slumber, nor does sleep overtake him. He, after all, created the universe in six days with no rest. God is loving, compassionate, merciful. He is the answerer of prayers, and he is indeed concerned with the daily affairs of all human beings. God is the beneficent, the merciful. He is the giver of life and the causer of death. He is the master of the day of judgment. He is the most high, the most supreme. He is the most generous and the most loving to his creation. God gives without measure to his servants. He gave life. He gifted the human beings with the ability to hear, taste, and see. God gifted human beings their hearts, minds, souls, strengths, and abilities. God created all things from nothing. He is in no need of his creation, although his creation is all in need of him. He is all knowledgeable and encompasses all things, the open and the secret, the public and the private. He knows all secrets that lay hidden in the hearts and minds of men. He knows of all that happened in the past, what is currently happening now, and what will happen in the future. Our Lord neither errs nor forgets. He is far removed from claiming anything comparable to him. He knows no equal. He is free from all defects and imperfections. He is the one that accepts repentance from his servants and forgives all sins. Allah is aware of what you endure and understands your feelings and struggles. Allah understands because he was with you all along. Allah has the power of all things. No other power, nor might, nor strength, nor influence can cause benefit or harm to anyone or anything except that which flows through him. Nothing can ever happen unless God wills it to be so. God can make things happen. Some people assume that God, as perceived in the faith of Islam, is a harsh, stern, and cruel God, one who demands to be respected, worshipped, and obeyed fully, and is not loving and kind to his creation. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is all-loving. In fact, he claims amongst his names Al-Wadud in Arabic, the all-loving, the love of God in the Qur'an is expressed and emphasized many times throughout his book. God bespeaks his love for the righteous, the charitable, the steadfast, the good doers, the just, the fair, the kind, those who trust him, the ones that are clean, the ones that purify themselves, 
and the one who fulfilled their obligations. The entire universe and everything it contains are proof of God's love for all his creation. He loves us so much that he gave us endless variety of foods, a vast array of land and wildfire, the sun, the moon, the stars, family, offspring, and much more. Everything one sees, feels, hears, tastes, and smells are all form of blessings given to us by our loving Creator. He didn't have to do this, but He chose to bestow these blessings upon us. His unbounded mercy encompasses everything. On the other hand, God is also just. Hence, evildoers and sinners must be held accountable for their actions. God is holy, righteous, and fair. If He didn't impose a punishment for evil, he would be allowing that evil to exist without any consequences. Since God cannot let that happen, His justice requires that a proper punishment be incurred and executed for their evil sins. Although Allah is not answerable to anybody, He has promised nonetheless to be just and fair with everyone. He has prohibited injustice amongst the innocent. Allah never would punish an innocent person, nor hold anyone accountable for the sins of another. Unlike Christianity, Islam imposes no burden of the original sin. Every human being is born with a clean slate and is rewarded or punished only on the basis of one's own actions, intent, words, and deeds. Allah is the absolute judge, the legislator. God is the one who distinguishes the right from the wrong. God is even more merciful to his creation than a mother is to her child. God is far removed from injustice and tyranny. He is all wise in all his actions and decrees. For one to be truly devoted to Allah and to love him above all else imaginable, one needs to have knowledge of God that goes beyond the basic aspects of his role as the sole creator and sustainer. To reward any seeker who strives to learn more about the creator, Allah has revealed a great deal of information about himself and his attributes. Allah has the most magnificent, beautiful of names and sublime, perfect attributes. No one shares his divinity nor his attributes. Allah's attributes are incomparable, greater, and more perfect than those acquired by people, as there is nothing like him, his attributes and actions. God has an infinite number of names and has a special category of 99 names listed in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet. Of his names is the ever merciful, the forgiving, the loving, the compassionate, the exalter, the just, the great, the protector, the caregiver, the ever living, the powerful, the first, the last, the pardoner, the light, the supporter, the eternal, the preserver, the wise, the originator, and the one who gives life and resurrection. If our Creator is eternal and everlasting, then His attributes must adhere to the same edict. God has perfect attributes. He has limitless and infinite hearing, vision, mercy, and above all, love. Muslims attribute certain factors to every quality of God. None of His attributes ever knew a beginning, nor will it ever have an ending. For instance, He has always been all hearing and always will be ever hearing. Allah hears everything from our inner thoughts in the tiniest whispers to the buzz of a mosquito's wing in the eruption of volcanoes. Language is no barrier for him, for God understands all. All of his attributes are infinite, whereas human beings can only hear what's in front of them, God can hear simultaneous conversations inside and outside of a room. God can hear it all. All of our attributes as humans were given to us as gifts, whereas all of God's attributes originated with Him. His attributes were not given to Him, they were within Him all along. The greatest and most honorable knowledge is that of Allah's names, attributes, and actions. God encourages His creation to learn His names so they can discover more about Him and truly know Him. How would one love, worship, fear, and trust God if they do not know His identity and His attributes? By learning Allah's name and attributes, one can appreciate His power over all things and increase the pleasure and sublime awe that he or she finds in God's company. That is why knowledge of Allah is a central tenet of the Islamic faith. It is truly when one ponders of the majesty of Allah that one's humility does increase. Muslims are advised to study and ponder His names and attributes and are encouraged to worship and call Him by those names. God is above his creation, above the heavens, above his throne. However, he never is contained by any sort of physical dimension. Allah is close, very close. 
God is close to those who believe in Him, and He answers every call. Saying that God is with His servants does not mean that He intermingles or dwells in His creation. Rather, He establishes His presence with His creation by knowledge and power. Nothing is hidden from Him of what His creation does or say. God is very near. He sees and knows every aspect of His creation. He hears every word that is uttered. He is knowledgeable of one's inner thoughts. God knows all of our dreams, secrets, desires, and wishes. Nothing is hidden from Him. Allah is in no need of His creation, although His creation is in need of Him. Allah wants humans to worship Him for their own benefit. Humans need God in their lives at all times and for all purposes. God is all dignity, all honor, all glory. Those who recognize the majesty of the Creator of all soon become awestruck and humble in their knowledge. One that rejects God and His guidance is like a patient refusing a doctor's medicine for his pain. This patient would be foolish, ignorant, and illogical in his action, as would be one who rejects Allah. Allah is fully omnipotent. Allah is self-sufficient. He is in no need of humanistic worship or anything else for that matter. Allah is perfect. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.